Hi, I'm Glenny D. And I'm Miss B. Welcome to today's tutorial. We're doing something a little bit different. We are partially reviewing the um, really popular engineering design activity uh, around zip lines. So we're going to do a bit of a review today and look at some ways that we can help students in the engineering design process when they're struggling um, with different elements of this project. So what have you got for us, Glenny D? I have a different version of the zip line. Often zip line projects rely on something whizzing down the zip line, or maybe if you want to drop a payload, students pulling a string to open a hatch. But today we're going to challenge the students to make a timed release mechanism on a zip line. I see that you've come up with a narrative around lava and rescue, which I love. So the very first thing that a lot of the zip line um, activities that we've seen don't do very well is they don't really construct um, a powerful narrative. So we think that's really important in, um, in engineering design and um, connecting the students into the project. So that really powerful narrative sounds so exciting. It looks disastrous. Let's start <laughs> off with the What I'm doing now is every single time I put the peg back in the same place so it releases the same amount of air and then if you have a look up there, that piece of paper where it is, it um, makes sure that we don't go further so we know how far it's gone. So if we put it in there, we're trying to land in that... Um, the uh, container over there and right now this is about a couple of breaths so three two one go <gasps> <Woo -hoo! laughs> let's start off with the payload miss b okay so we need to get the payload from one rooftop down to the other rooftop so we need something a cradle to move across and I would give my students a paper clip, which is simply bent like this. And that can go over the line. This could be fishing line, it could be string, it could be cord. Uh, something fairly slippery works better. Now, uh, you need to attach securely the ends. And I'm going to draw a diagram here. The actual slope or gradient for the line I've estimated needs to be one in four. So if this was one and a half meter, if this was half a meter, this would be one and a half meters. So for four meters across, we'd come down one meter. Mm -hmm. So what it is, is it's doable in a classroom, indoor, hallway environment, um, at home, on a back deck. Absolutely. Okay, and something fantastic. short like this doesn't require students to pop up on anything more than maybe a very small stage. Yeah. Well, a, a, a regular sized, like 10 year old would be able to reach that. Easily. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got our scenario, we've got our setup, we're looking at some common materials. Those common materials that are often um, indicated in blogs and other YouTube videos um, are all pretty decent. Uh, so we will talk a little bit about some trouble that you might come across with those basic materials, just as part of our material science. Um, but the very first tip that we wanna talk about is when students struggle when the mechanism locks. As it moves across, and it swings, the, the clip tends to lock itself onto the string mm -hmm. and then it'll sort of start and stop and start and stop. If your students may run into that problem. Yeah. Adding friction. Yeah, and adding friction, yeah, like a brake, putting the brakes on. So what I found was uh, sticking two paper clips to your carriage worked much better. Okay. Great. So you could actually, depending on the, the depth of, um, I guess, learning and the, the richness of the activity and how much time you've got, you could, you could give them a choice of how many they wanted to use. Um, and then just they could just trial um, that Exactly. Process. It depends how long you've got for the activity. 40 yeah. minutes, direct them more. If it stretches over um, a number of an hour a day, over a number of days, then uh, don't give them much direction at all. 
<laughs> Fantastic. All right. Next, um, next point. Now, when you have just picked up that platform, then a lot of them require a platform or some sort of um, holding device for this timed option. Yes. Um, what I found is is that the balloon can get stuck, so students do struggle with their design concept. Yes, I'm popping a peg on there, and the peg uh, slows down, restricts the airflow. So your students would have this as part of the carriage and underneath the payloads hanging down. So I'm going to come up to this camera and I'm going to let it go. Two, one, hey. boom. So there is our time release mechanism. And you can see why I've got the peg on there. Cool. The problem is a lot of students, can you pass me that pencil, Glenny D? A lot of students have troubles when they hook their platform on all right, and this is the balloon here. Yeah, that's our balloon. Um, they're not allowing enough room between the platform mm. and mm. the actual zip line, um, fishing line that we've constructed. Yes. So this is a problem here that they'll have to work with. And if some students use sticky tape for here, then when the balloon is really big yes. it sticks to the tape so uh, it's actually retained so if we if we do create the this section here mm. um out of sticky tape yeah it can retain the balloon and trap the balloon so uh, just a basic cardboard setup would be better than sticky tape wouldn't it this is suspended by nothing more than some tape then the platform can swing yep so you're right, um, some students will use a piece of cardboard to connect. Then again, here's another idea altogether using an upcycled plastic container as the carriage. Yeah, so stabilizing the platform actually also helps with our second point, which was we're getting the blue retained. Like, yeah. Yes, that's right. These are all variables. As best you can, try to reduce all of those variables um, to try and increase your accuracy. Okay, we, we, we definitely want accuracy, especially if it's candy dropping in the basket, <laughs> like we've seen on Halloween. Okay, fantastic. Now, um, the next point was um, the setting the starting point. But a lot of these activities, um, they forget to factor that in. And that's really crucial if you're having a timed release. Uh, yeah, good point. So if we had a bucket, for instance, that students were... Uh, releasing into, so this is the target area, then if they start the carriage back too far or forwards, then it changes straight away where it's going to land. So it could be as simple as putting a piece of tape onto the line so they start from the same position. Now, just to give you uh, a, a, another look at this challenge, we have practiced it at home. We've looked at all these variables to see how we go, and um, we've got some video here. So let's just have a look um, at a couple of those things, those points that we've just discussed. Since all those other tests have been two, so if I do one. One breath. Three, two, one, go. Oh! Oh! <laughs> What we see here in this first failed attempt was that it released too early, Miss B. So the balloon deflated too fast. Exactly. And so we can adjust the deflation rate by moving the position of the peg. But that includes another variable. So how can we um, encourage our students to find a way to make it deflate at an even rate? One of the solutions the students can try is using a restriction. So it restricts the amount of air that can go out and in and deflates more slowly. So how do we make sure then that the inflation part of the experiment is consistent? So meaning, how do we know that the same amount of air volume is in the balloon each time when we're changing different variables, right? Right, so the students would need to find a way to measure the diameter of the sphere, the balloon, uh, once inflated, uh, a simple method might be to use a strip of paper and by wrapping that around, uh, if I inflate the balloon to that size every time, I'm getting a consistent volume. Mm -hmm. Number seven, our seventh tip is um, the material science side of things. So. <laughs> a lot of students um, self-made a little round, um, like straw-like 
object so they could blow in. The trick is if you're using paper straws or you make your own, um, paper is porous and therefore after we have started blowing up our balloons, the moisture in our breath actually um, makes the straw um, mushy. And so yeah, it weakens and it can actually close um, and then uh, cause problems in the ability of the air to be released. So what do we do Miss B? Well, we uh, repurpose some old textures. So that was good, very, very simple. Or we could use metal straws. Yeah. The best thing, like we said at the beginning about the zipline challenges that you will find online, um, really simple uh, products and materials that you can use. And it so, has so many variables. Um, it's great for all ages. It's a fantastic uh, exercise. It looks so simple when you first show the students, you just need a balloon, blow the balloon up and have it pop through there so that it drops into the bucket. Oh yeah, oh yeah no problem. But once you start on this, you find there are so many variables and it needs fine tuning. And that's the fantastic thing about engineering and prototyping. It's the iterative process. It never works the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks so much guys. Uh, check out our blog, we've left all the details there. Uh, if you want to try a DIY zip line in your classroom or at home, but need a little bit of support with the engineering design side of it. Bye. Bye. Here's a resource from NASA's JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory.